Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching The Gray Man, directed by the Russo brothers and based off the novels by Mark Greeny. Now, The Gray Man is definitely an interesting case when it comes to the Netflix original films, especially considering that it's not only one with a budget of $200 million, probably making it the most expensive film that Netflix ever has ever done, but also with the big names attached to it. Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Jessica Henwick. So, obviously, Netflix had a lot of faith in this, especially considering it went through development hell. But does that ultimately lead to a good film? Well, let's see. The story centers around Sierra Six, played by Ryan Gosling, who works for the CIA. But when he discovers some incriminating secrets for the organization, they send in a psychopathic former agent named Lloyd, named Lloyd, played by Chris Evans, in order to track him down, along with an entire rogues gallery of assassins. So Gosling has to work alongside another agent, played by Ana de Armas, in order to evade the various agents as they go around the world to try and find Chris Evans' Lloyd, and as they try to go from action scene to action scene in order to basically deal with this entire conflict that revolves around information that could leave a black eye on the CIA and for, for, forever. But that's all I'll say about the story. It generally does follow the thriller template when it comes to a lot of these stories that focus on the CIA or the FBI or whatever government agency happens to be in the main center of the plot when it comes to a lot of these movies. There's a lot of fistfights, gun battles, and a lot of one-liners between our main heroes and villains. And honestly, the Russo brothers do a good job with this, considering that they've had a lot of experience working with these kinds of thrillers and action films before. Even in the MCU, when they did the, the, their Captain America movies, like The Winter Soldier, which is still one of my favorites in the entire genre. And considering that Chris Evans and Ana de Armas work together in Knives Out, it certainly shows that they have a lot of chemistry together, and Ryan Gosling's able to have some of that chemistry too. Now, obviously, a lot of the budget went to the action scenes in this film, and you can definitely tell the Russos had a lot of fun making those. Whether it's a fight in a plane that results in Ryan Gosling skydiving, a fu the final fight in a fountain that has Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling punching each other, choking each other, and exchanging various tough guy lines in Prague, or Ryan Gosling evading getting shot by cops while being handcuffed while being handcuffed to a bench while mercenaries are also attacking, it's clear that the action scenes took top priority here, and with, in that respect, the money is definitely on the screen. You can definitely tell that a lot of these action scenes took a lot of money because a lot of those things were really there. The, the, like, there's actually cars exploding, there's actually a lot of scenery destruction, and there's actually clearly a lot of choreography the actors had to go through in order to get these scenes done. That's not to say that this movie's perfect, though. A lot of the characters are kind of stock, as well as the plot, considering that the story itself didn't really grab me, and one of the only characters that really got my interest was main antagonist Lloyd, mainly because Chris Evans feels like he's having a ball in the role. He genuinely feels psychotic, and he also has a lot of funny lines that fit a movie villain of this caliber. With both this and Knives Out, I'm kind of seeing how Chris Evans does a really good job playing the bad guy, which is surprising considering how good he was with Captain America. So, ultimately, it's definitely not going to be a classic film or one of the best of the year, but it's worth your time if you're into this kind of action film, and I definitely think it's one of the better ones that Netflix has made recently. That's why I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Who knows if it'll be a franchise, though. Oh, See you next time.